Hello friends today i have brought you a book called medical medium liver rescue in this new york times best selling book author anthony williams reveals how reducing the stress on your liver can help resolve a wide range of symptoms and conditions and transform your health in ways you have never imagined contrary to popular belief The outcome of overload overloading the liver is not only about liver cirrhosis cancer and hepatitis nearly every problem from minor general health complaints to emotional struggles to digestive issues to weight gain to high blood pressure stems from an overloaded overloaded liver and can improve and heal when you harness the full power of this humble organ so let us start the audiobook summary chapter 1 though the liver is the least appreciated of all organs it remains our greatest ally of all the organs in our body the liver is the least popular our educational system doesn't give us much about the liver and it doesn't make headline news like the brain heart or muscles with the brain we can hook up some diodes and watch its activities on an eeg machine we know the difference between asleep and awake If anything happens to be wrong with the brain, we can feel the effect almost instantaneously. We know when we're experiencing thought blockages, emotional issues, anxiety, or depression. The same goes for the heart. We feel it beat, we feel it race, and we are aware if it's out of sync. We often neglect our livers because we have no idea how hard they work to keep us healthy. However, when it comes to the liver, it's just out of sight, out of mind. Most of us don't even know where it is in our bodies. We erroneously believe that the liver is not working all that hard for us since we can't feel it the way we can feel the heart beating. If we can't see it struggling, then there must not be a problem. The truth is, your liver is the best friend you've ever had. It is what keeps you alive. The liver performs thousands of critical functions that are even yet to be discovered by medical research and science. It works hard for you day and night, defending and protecting you from every angle. The liver disarms and detains harmful materials. It screens and filters blood to rid it of toxic substances. It is the organ responsible for the storage of glucose, glycogen, vitamins, and minerals. Read on to learn more about the critical functions of the liver and how you can best take care of yours to attain optimum health. Chapter 2. The liver is a storehouse, filter, processing center, garbage service, and more. In the toxic and haphazard world we live in today, our livers are in trouble and we really need to take better care of them. The key to good health and long life is discovering the power of our livers and the power of caring for them. Essentially, a healthy liver translates to a healthy heart, a healthy brain, a healthy immune system, skin, and gut. A healthy liver is the ultimate de-stressor, the ultimate anti-aging ally, the ultimate safeguard against an unsafe world. It's key to mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual well-being. You can attain enlightenment by unburdening and healing your liver. When seeking enlightenment, people often focus on the brain, trying to reach higher consciousness by quieting the mind or to manifest the future through their thoughts. They completely ignore the liver in the process. The truth is, when your liver is healthy, you will be clearer headed, more peaceful, and happier. Paying quality attention to your liver is not the proverbial straw that broke the camel's back. It's the helping hand that saved the camel's life by lightening its load. In the next chapters, we will be taking a closer look at how our lifestyle affects our liver and how we can harness the power of this organ by rescuing it and keeping it healthy. Saying yes to liver support is the most efficient action on your to-do. Anthony William. Chapter 3 Even healthy or good fats can result in an overworked liver and eventually diabetes. There are so many types of fats out there today that it's almost difficult to keep up with them. Good fat, bad fat, high fat, low fat, non-fat, saturated fat, unsaturated fat, trans fat, healthy fat, omega fatty acids, it's enough to make your head spin. Being the central organ that processes everything that comes into the body, processing fat is one of the liver's main jobs. Whenever you eat fat, your liver releases bile to break it down and deliver the fat to your body as energy. This is, however, more complicated than it sounds. Different amounts and complex compositions of bile are needed for different foods and different levels of fats. So your liver has to harness its adaptogenic ability to prepare and respond to your fat intake at every meal. The higher the fat content in your meal, the more bile your liver produces. 
So when it comes to watching your fat intake, it's not all about good fat versus bad fat. While choosing fats from healthy sources is a great first step, it's not the only safeguard. Levels of fat matter, too. When every meal you have is filled with excess fats, whether good or bad, your liver will be forced to exhaust itself producing the bile necessary to protect you from hurting yourself. And whenever your liver constantly exhausts itself making bile day in and day out, you can end up paying the price with weight gain in your older years and other liver health complications that arise along the way. Chapter 4. An overburdened liver may lead to an overburdened pancreas, which may result in diabetes. One of the major reasons your liver is so committed to regulating the fat content in your blood is to protect your pancreas. Unlike your liver, which is like a workhorse and a warhorse, your pancreas is a delicate flower. One of the main functions of the pancreas is to produce insulin, the vital hormone which regulates blood sugar. Your liver does everything possible to protect the body from excess fat because otherwise the pancreas takes the heat, forced to produce more and more insulin over time. In effect, the pancreas eventually becomes erratic in its hormone production. It may even lose the ability to produce insulin at all, and when our body is deficient in insulin, we end up with diabetes. The more fat in our bloodstream, organs, digestive tract, and lymph fluid, the more insulin our body needs to try to force glucose through the fat saturation so it can enter into the cells and the body can function. Fat, not sugar, is the real culprit in insulin-resistance diabetes. Hence, insulin resistance, which is the major risk factor for type 2 diabetes, isn't caused by eating too many carbohydrates. Fat is the real culprit. The increase in blood sugar from eating too many carbs is merely a symptom of insulin resistance from eating too much fat. As Anthony William recommends, whatever your current diet is, try to reduce the fat content of your meals by at least 25%. If you are on a diet that requires nuts or avocados, for instance, replace the nuts with berries and cut back on the avocados. If you eat one avocado per day, reduce it to half per day. Take as many sources of fat as possible and replace them with liver-healing foods like celery, apples, asparagus, bananas, carrots, potatoes, and cranberries. Chapter 5. Sluggish liver is the precursor to all kinds of liver diseases. As we've learned earlier, the liver is the body's peacekeeper. It sacrifices itself to protect you from toxins, alcohol poisoning, dirty blood, high blood pressure, and much more. In most people, the liver serves this function for decades. Then, like any person, if it's pushed past its limit, overloaded and taken for granted for too long, it reaches the point where it can no longer keep the peace. It becomes sick, congested, disgruntled, frustrated, and even angry, pushed over the edge and into battle. The first of those battle modes is sluggish liver. If it's not caught at this stage, bigger and fiercer battles can arise that show themselves as bigger and fiercer symptoms and conditions. Unfortunately, the vast majority of us take our livers for granted, never taking care of it as much as it deserves, which hinders the liver from being able to do its job efficiently. Sluggish liver develops when the liver starts using its nutrient storing capacity for storing toxins. When you overburden your liver, it will no longer be able to filter and excrete the toxins. It stores them to be dealt with later. When the body has too many toxins to store, the liver gets rid of nutrients to make room for all the trash it can't process. This is essentially how sluggish liver develops. Sluggish liver is so common that 9 out of 10 people experience it, and it is the precursor to practically anything else that goes wrong with the liver. Unfortunately, as common as sluggish liver is, it's not on the radar of medical research and science. Chapter 6. Your liver's plea for help always manifests as different conditions and symptoms. There are five different varieties of a sluggish liver, depending on which part of the liver is overburdened, each presenting with a unique set of symptoms. However, it is worth noting that you could have a sluggish liver in one or even all five of these areas and not experience even one of these symptoms. Middle of the liver, hot flashes, night sweats, poor skin tone, swelling, sense of loneliness, depression, anxiety, and excessive thirst. Bottom of the liver, insomnia, constipation, a feeling of unease, jealousy. Top of the liver, poor digestion, acid reflux, bloating, gastritis, frustration, shoulder ache, and tongue sores. Left side of the liver, feelings of weakness in the left leg or arm, nausea, Anxiousness, lack of hunger, emotional sensitivities, and backaches. Right side of the liver. Brittle and are discolored nails, leg spasms or cramps, mild tongue discoloration, 
and weakness on the right side of the body. Bear in mind, however, that if you are experiencing any of these symptoms, it doesn't mean your body is falling apart. These symptoms are just your liver saying, please help me. Don't see health problems as a reason to dislike or distrust your body. Your body is on your side. It's not out to get you, and it's not letting you down. Learn to see the hidden blessing that the liver cries out for help. After all, when the liver shows its struggle, it allows us to respond, to bring it back to health, and to reclaim our lives. It is also common to have a sluggish liver and experience no symptoms at all for a long time. Anthony William Chapter 7 Weight gain is a result of infringements in the functions of the liver. When asked about the cause of weight gain, most of the health and fitness professionals out there will tell you it's due to slow metabolism, eating too much, eating too many carbs, or not exercising enough. The truth is, it's merely a stereotype that the reason people are overweight is that they love food, overindulging in fried items, sweets, and other treats while spending too much time on the couch, and nobody has a fast or slow metabolism. If you're overweight, it may have felt awful to think that you were born with an inadequate metabolism while your neighbor or coworker hit the jackpot. What weight gain really comes down to is how fast or how slow your liver functions. When someone can eat all the cookies he wants and not gain an ounce, it's not because he has a fast metabolism. It's because he has a liver that hasn't yet hit its fat-storing or poison-storing limitation and therefore functions at a faster pace. Put simply, weight gain often means that the storage capacity of the liver has been compromised. Compromised fat storage doesn't necessarily mean that your diet is the issue. While for anyone, eating a lot of high-fat foods can certainly affect the storage capacity of the liver, there are several others that can be of influence as well. Anything that overburdens the liver can affect its storage capacity. This includes viral infections, toxic heavy metals, pesticides, herbicides, plastics, industrial chemicals, and other toxins. If any of these substances build up in the liver, they will take up valuable fat storage space, leading to the accumulation of fat in the abdomen and all over the body. So if some of the people with whom you are on the same exercise regime or diet plan are losing weight and you aren't, it's not because there's something wrong with you. It's not because you've been genetically predestined to be overweight. Chapter 8. Liver Rescue Morning. Tapping into your liver's normal, God-given cleansing functions. Your liver is your greatest ally. It doesn't want anything bad to happen to you. Your liver wants you to get relief from your symptoms and conditions so you can finally experience the clear skin or mood stabilization or weight loss or lifting of fatigue you so much desire. Your liver wants relief from its daily overload of fats and from a lifetime of pathogenic activity and toxin exposure, all so it can lead you to better health. To cleanse properly and effectively, however, the liver needs finesse and care. It doesn't want to be treated like a machine. It needs you to have a solid knowledge of how it functions. To keep your liver healthy and in good condition by helping it cleanse every day, Anthony Williams recommends an approach he calls the liver rescue morning. The liver rescue morning is a quick, easy cleanse you can try anytime and incorporate into your daily life. At night, you and your liver go to bed at the same time, but your liver wakes up around 3 or 4 in the morning to get to work. Your liver likes this period while you're still asleep. It knows you won't be consuming heavy foods or drinking espresso or experiencing adrenaline bursts from an emotional or dramatic event at this time. So it uses the time to scrub up messes, collect any junk from the previous day, and flush out the trash. Essentially, the liver rescue morning is all about tapping into the liver's normal, God-given cleansing functions when you wake up to give yourself a huge healing advantage. So how do you go about the liver rescue morning? We'll take a closer look in the next chapter. Chapter 9. The Liver Rescue Morning Starts by Getting Enough Fluid First, hydrate well once you wake up in the morning. When you get up, your blood is dirty with all the toxins and waste that your liver has discarded earlier in the morning. If you don't flush out the waste by getting hydrated, your liver will have no choice but to reabsorb it. This, in effect, can stop you from making progress with your healing. So, immediately, hydrate when you wake up by drinking lemon or lime water, celery juice, or cucumber juice on an empty stomach. You can also flush out your bloodstream with super hydrating drinks like coconut water, aloe water, smoothies, and fresh fruit and vegetable juices. Secondly, stay away from foods that contain fats before lunchtime. Focus on water-rich foods like melons, apples, cucumbers, celery, grapes, oranges, tangerines, berries, pears, cherries, apricots, peaches, nectarines, and papayas. 
The moment you eat radical fat-containing foods like nuts and nut butters, oil, avocado, coconut, eggs, bacon, milk, chicken, sausage, ham, and more, your liver gets interrupted and the detoxing stops. Also, avoid proteins in the morning. Save your servings of protein for later in the day. High-protein foods such as yogurt, kefir, milk, butter, eggs, cheese, and smoked salmon are still high in fat and will hold back your healing if you eat them in the morning. Skipping fats and proteins does not mean skipping breakfast. If you're used to eating dense, rich, or heavy food in the mornings, don't be scared of the liver rescue morning. You still get to eat, and you get to eat well as you're getting well. You can even go for some steamed potatoes, sweet potatoes, or winter squash in the late morning for a really satisfying, glucose-rich, liver-healing snack. Finally, try as much as possible to avoid caffeine and processed foods during your liver rescue morning. If you can skip these items on those mornings you're trying to help your liver detox, you will be doing your health a huge favor. Chapter 10. Liver Rescue 369. Give your liver a deep cleansing by getting in tune with its healing secret. Another approach you can take to help your liver cleanse itself is the Liver Rescue 369, which is a nine-day eating plan made up of three three-day intervals that gradually get your liver used to letting go. Eating leafy greens, vegetables, and fruits every day keeps your liver healthy. The first three days of the plan, called the three, is the preparation phase, and it is very important. Just like the liver rescue morning, you will start each of these three days simply with 16 ounces of lemon or lime water. This will help flush your liver's accumulated waste from the night before out of your system. You will have three meals a day, your regular breakfast, lunch, and dinner. However, you must avoid gluten, dairy, eggs, lamb, pork products, and canola oil. The next three days, the six, is the phase when your liver gets to unpack some of its old pool of toxins, fats, and viral waste matter it's been holding for months or years. For breakfast, you can try this liver rescue smoothie. Six bananas are two Maridol papaya, two fresh pitaya, dragon fruit, or one package of frozen pitaya or six tablespoons of powdered pitaya. Six cups of wild blueberries, fresh or frozen. For lunch, you'll have steamed vegetables, especially asparagus and Brussels sprouts, with the liver rescue salad of tomatoes, cucumber, celery, and leafy greens. You will also snack on two apples, one to four dates, and celery sticks. Dinner will be very similar to lunch, salad with steamed asparagus and our Brussels sprouts. During this phase, you will have to avoid fats and animal products entirely. The last three days, or the nine, is when your liver gets to let go, sending tons of toxins and fats into your bloodstream for delivery out of your body. For this period, start each day by drinking lemon or lime water. Half an hour later, drink 16-ounce celery juice and a liver rescue smoothie 20 minutes later. Lunch will be a delicious, nourishing spinach soup over cucumber noodles or raw zucchini noodles. For dinner, keep eating the liver rescue salad with steamed asparagus and Brussels sprouts. Did you know? Asparagus and Brussels sprouts contain a similar chemical compound that travels directly to the liver and triggers a purging effect. Conclusion The liver is the least popular of all the organs in our body, and since we don't know much about it, we don't treat it as well as it deserves to be treated. Most of us go about every day eating piles after piles of junk foods without even giving a thought to the fact that there is an organ bearing the brunt of cleaning all that junk out of our system. Truth is, your liver is the best friend you've ever had. It is the reason you're still alive after all the assorted combos of food you've been ingesting every day of your life. Apart from ridding our system of toxins, the liver also performs thousands of critical functions that are even yet to be discovered by medical research and science. Most of the diseases and symptoms that are common out there today are connected to the health of the liver. Because we are not taught the importance of our livers or how to take good care of them, they become neglected, sluggish, and result in a variety of diseases. Improving the health of your liver is the key to weight loss, as well as eliminating brain fog, skin and hormonal conditions, diabetes, high blood pressure, and many more. One major way to ensure your liver stays healthy is to be highly mindful of what you consume and when you eat it. Don't just indulge in a bout of junk eating just because you feel like it. Remember, a healthy liver translates to a healthy and long life. Try this. Reduce the fat content of your meals by at least 25%. Whatever your current diet is, take as many sources of fat as possible and replace them with liver-healing foods like celery, apples, asparagus, bananas, carrots, potatoes, and cranberries.